Hi everyone, today I am going to talk about frequent selective surfaces or as called meta materials and I am going to design two frequent selective surfaces uh, working in expand and in 60 GHz. So let's start. As you know, frequent selective surface uh, they are they select the frequencies and they allow some frequencies to pass from over to other side and some frequencies to reflect back. So there are different uh, types, very very different types of uh, frequency selective surfaces, and uh, it depends on your application where to choose one or another. So each of each type has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. So you have to choose, uh, simulate it, and uh, in the end, uh, uh, say if it's uh, possible for your application to use it. So, but uh, the circle loop is my favorite one because you can use it in both linear and circular polarization antennas, and it's quite easy to manufacture it, and you know, it's easy to simulate. It. So uh, it has been said, and also uh, there are two types of frequency selective surfaces: one aperture types and one patch types. As you know, uh, the frequency uh, dependence are the same for these two types of uh, elements, but uh, in the patch types you have the patch elements or loops or other things and it only reflects one frequency and so it means that it stops one frequency to pass over the other side of the uh, surface but here it uh, this aperture type elements reflect all the frequencies but only pass one uh, frequency uh, to the other side so it's also depends on your application whether to choose so and there is one very good book uh, in the internet it's called surface selective frequency selective surface uh, by monk you can download it from internet and it's very good book and it describes all the analytical and practical parts of the designing uh, of frequency selective surface FSS. So let's start our simulation. First of all, we are clicking a uh, new template, microwave arithmetical, and we are clicking uh, periodic structures. Click next. And if you want to design uh, the unit cell of your frequency selective surface metamaterial, you have to choose this. And uh, in after you optimize your unit cell, you can choose other parts here to simulate your full structure in your antenna, with your antenna. So click next. You have to choose phase reflection diagram for our case. And click next. And uh, it shows two solvers you can use for frequency selective surface we are going to choose frequency domain uh, solver because it allows you to simulate also uh, oblique uh, instance on the surface and it may be useful for your application to take account uh, the other uh, arrival angles of the plane wave to your surface next uh, we click again next and we choose the frequency to be uh, 4 to 10 gigahertz. We want to see the E field and click next. Click finish. So we will have the blank example. So first, uh, we are going to design loop element uh, in this project. So first of all, let's design its uh, substrate because these elements will sit on the some dielectric substrate so let's 
for example, say substrate uh, from minus x over 2 to x over 2 minus y over 2 to y over 2 uh, for from 0 minus from 0 to substrate i and let's choose the most uh, common dielectric factor with epsilon 4.3 click load and if we click here okay, it asks what will be our patch uh, dimension uh, so let's let's uh, first of all our frequency will be 7 GHz for if we click calculate calculate wavelength if we click 7 and 7.3 and click OK it shows that our uh, half wavelength will be 10.33 mm so if we choose 50% larger of this value we can uh, approximately get the uh, patch uh, dimensions that we are going to use in our project. Yeah, it's general uh, rule. So after optimization, you will have the good uh, approximation from zero to substrate high. The FRTO component uh, FSS preview x for Thin, for example, y to be x, uh, we want to be a, uh, our fcs to be a square patch. Click next, substrate height to be 0 0.5 millimeters, and we will have where well, click OK, we will have substrate with FR4. So let's put on this substrate our frequency selective surface. So as I said, it will be a uh, circular one. So FSS, FSS, this for to be take outer radius R O outer. I highly recommend you to use uh, parameters in all of your CSD projects because it makes life <laughs> much easier substrate high and you can easily uh, uh, change your parameters and uh, copper uh, metal high and you can easily change your parameters and uh, optimize your design air out uh, as you can see here we are going to use circular element and our circular dimension will be uh, the uh, wavelength divided by 3 so it will be approximately um, 6 millimeters I think our ring uh, width for example to be 0 0.5 and uh, our metal height will be 0.035 and if we click OK we will have here our frequency selective surface congruization and let's look at the parameters of our uh, simulation uh, we have here frequency defined background to be normal always check these parameters before simulating your design and the special kind in our frequency selective surface, our boundaries. Uh, it, if because we have chosen uh, frequency selective cell uh, unit cell design, it automatically uh, set these boundaries to be unit cell. As you can see, it uh, approximates that we will have the unit cell up to the infinity and it added open space here and back side and also he defined two parameters theta and phi uh, these parameters are the elevation and azimuth angles of the plane wave that our simulation will uh, apply to our uh, unit set so 
use all the parameters, click OK, and it also defines two ports here. One port Zmax and two port Zmin. Zmin. You can say that Zmin to be a port number one and Zmin to be port number two. So if we click frequency and don't change anything and click start, it will start simulating and don't do, we cannot, I have already simulated this one and let's look at the result. So here we have the x to be 18. It can be anything that you, uh, I think, huh? First of all, I start my design with uh, x to be equal to 14. And let us look at the s parameters here. s max 1 and uh, uh, z max 1. What does this mean? It means that uh, you will it is uh, say that s1 to 1 and this one uh, in the brackets means that uh, you will have a horizontal uh, plane wave polarization and it's uh, mean to max means that uh, your s2 to 1 for transition it, this parameter shows the reflection and this parameter shows the transmission coefficient of our simulation and other parameters are the cross uh, polarization uh, parameters that we don't usually use so let us look at the at this parameter here we have x to be 14 our radius to be 5.5 and our weight to be 0.5 you can see here that our frequency has been simulated uh, in around 8 gigahertz. What does this mean? It means that our uh, this design, this design, uh, we can see here from the graph that uh, in this frequency, all the uh, electromagnetic plane wave. Uh, transmits to the uh, reflect back reflects back and we can see here our S11 parameter to be uh, approximately uh, 0 and our S21 parameter which shows the transmission coefficient to be very low and this means that uh, this uh, frequency selective surface will reflect 8 gigahertz uh, signals and transmit all other ones to the other side so we want to be if we want to change uh, this uh, resonance frequency to other uh, part we must change other uh, our radius or other width or our dimension uh, unit cell dimension so let's look at the results I have already changed uh, parameters before you to show you and let's look at the results so here we have uh, the change of the width of the frequency selective surface so uh, the width of the frequency selective surface as it increases our frequency increases uh, you can uh, think uh, this frequency electric surface as you you have an inductance and uh, you have also capacitance between the elements uh, of the frequency electric surface and if you change the width increase the width your inductance rises and also your resonance frequency rises accordingly so also uh, if you if you change uh, your unit cell dimension increase your unit cell dimension 
your frequency also rises uh, due to the same reason and that's basically all of it and if you have any questions you can ask them in the comment section I will add this project uh, link at the description so <coughs> one of our friends uh, asked me to do his project and he asked me to explain it so let's look at this project in here here what we have here we have here two uh, rings uh, slot rings here and uh, two slot rings here and uh, as we can see our element uh, our element uh, is patch is not patch it's, uh, it's uh, slot uh, type and it differs from our current uh, project because here if we look we look at this we have uh, reflection in certain frequency but here if we simulate this uh, we have transmission which means that this device only uh, transmit uh, frequencies uh, in 60 gigahertz to the other side and reflect all other ones uh, that side and that's basically it. all other parameters are the same. You can also change its bandwidth and its resonance frequency by changing radius of these elements and their width. Also, uh, here we have a very interesting uh, application. If we stack them uh, on top of each other, uh, we can increase the bandwidth of our frequency selective surface, as we can see here, because. Uh, this uh, frequency selective surface metamaterials material are basically uh, filters. It filters other uh, other frequency except the working frequency. So if you add them, uh, they will increase the bandwidth as we can see here, and uh, you can use this in other uh, projects uh, in your application. So, hope you have enjoyed my video and also uh, if you have any questions I can uh, answer them in the comment section. In my next video I will talk about reflectory antenna unit cells and how to design them. So, have a good day. Uh, see you in the next video.